Hello everyone. In today's video, I'm going to show you how we can extract data from DynamoDB table and load to an S3 bucket in an automated way. Uh, we are using DynamoDB table to store some items which we quickly want to refer in our operation. And uh, the pricing of DynamoDB table depends on two factors, the read capacity unit that is RCU and write capacity unit that is WCU. Uh, if you are using DynamoDB table for storing some log information of your processes, the data will keep on increasing as time goes. And to extract data for a particular process, you may have to scan or you may have to query a huge amount of data. That will increase your uh, read capacity units and it will also in reflect in your, in your cost of your application. So I wanted to develop a process which will extract old data from DynamoDB table which is not required anymore and put that data into the S3 bucket so that if required a user can go and query the S3 bucket using Athena uh, and the Glue catalog. So this video I'll walk you through this diagram where I will explain you each step and the features of DynamoDB uh, I have used to implement this. So let's get into the video. So here I have used a DynamoDB table and in DynamoDB table I have enabled two properties. The first one is TTL that is time to live and DynamoDB streams. And the output of this stream I have given uh, as an or the trigger has been a lambda function which will process the records which are deleted from the DynamoDB table. Now the time to live is an operation which uh, I am referring the the Amazon AWS docs. So here it is mentioning that whenever we are enabling a TTL property on a column, it will expire that column when time reaches and typically it takes around 48 hours of time. So let's say if that item is expiring now, from now till next 48 hours, the item will be deleted. It may not be happening at the same time when the time reaches the TTL, but it may take around two days, that is 48 hours to expire. Now this time which we have to enter it is in the epoch time. So epoch time is uh, a time in Unix which provides the number of seconds from certain date in 1971. So this is the website I'm using to find out the epoch time. So it is showing me, let me refresh it. So it is showing me the time, the current time and if I uh, mention human to date human date to time stamp it will give me the epoch time uh, for the current time right although it is showing me time which is different because this is the utc time and i am working from the singapore time zone so that is the difference we are seeing here so the epoch time will always be in utc and that you have to use in your dynamodb table against the column which you have created as ttl so once that time reaches uh, within 48 hours the record will be deleted and that record, deleted record will go to the DynamoDB stream based on the event because uh, the stream will be created for any change in the database, whether it is insert, modify or remove. So team stream will be notified about that event. But I want to filter out only the remove items or the remove event. And that's why I have updated the process in such a way that stream will call the Lambda function only when the remove action is performed. Then the, once the record or the event is in Lambda, it will go through the data, it will create a file of the data received and it will store that file into the Lambda's time space. It will also create a structure, a partition uh, structure in S3 so that we can store those files based on the year and the month that data, the log data belongs to, right? The reason I'm doing the partition is because once the data is partitioned, it will be very useful uh, or cost uh, optimized to query it from the Athena because once Athena sees that the S3 bucket is partitioned, it will go and get the specific part, the specific prefix of the S3 bucket where data is located from Glue catalog and then it will contact the S3 bucket to extract only that specific data rather than going through the entire data of the bucket, right? So once the data is in S3 in partition form, a glue crawler will be called at a specific time to crawl the data and put and catalog it in the glue catalog, right? Then I have created uh, an external table from Athena because I'm using some JSON format. So I have to create a special external table and run that query, a select query in the Athena. 
So assume that a user wants to see data which is seven months or eight months old, then user can go to the Athena and execute that query to extract the data. So this will be a cost effective way of using your data, uh, moving the older data which is not required in DynamoDB and moving it to the low storage S3 bucket and then querying uh, it from the Athena using the specific partition, specific month or specific date data you need. So this way I have implemented uh, this architecture. Now in the next part, I will go into the actual uh, objects and I'll give you a demo. Okay, so this is the DynamoDB table I have created. Uh, consider that this is the table which I'm using to store log information about my processes. Now, uh, the two things which I have enabled in this table are the first, the TTL and the stream. So let me first take you to the TTL. So if you go to the additional setting of the table in the and scroll down, you will see a time to live has been enabled and the attribute on which the time to live is available is the delete time. You can provide any uh, appropriate naming, uh, the column name you want, but unless and until the time, the, the attribute name is the same which is given over here, the detail will not work. So be careful that whenever you are inserting a record into your DynamoDB table and you want the detail to work, you have to provide the name as delete underscore time or whatever the name you have given over here. The next part is that stream. So here I have enabled a stream, the DynamoDB stream details it is enabled. And in the target, I'm calling a, an, a Lambda function. Uh, <clears throat> there are few types available of what kind of data you want to send, whether it is only the new image, only the old image, both image, old and new, and the keys. So I have selected old image over here. And this is the trigger. This is the Lambda function name over uh, of the, uh, the function name which I have created, right? Then I have a Lambda function here created over here. So if I come here, I can see the in the trigger, I see a lab DynamoDB. And this is the simple function I have created where I'm doing. I'm creating first, uh, I'm, I'm just providing a name to my file uh, and I'm providing the time. Uh, so that I'm prefixing or suffixing a time and some random integer because I may get multiple requests at the same time. So to differentiate the different files, I'm using some random integer. I'm storing this file into the temp location of Lambda. So now Lambda has increased the temp location, the temp space, I guess still up to 10, 10 GB. So your process will definitely uh, can fit that data, that amount of data in the 10 GB. So I'm storing the data in the time space. Then I'm creating an S3 file location where I'm giving a partition structure. So I'm providing the data year. The data year is the year on which or for which the log was generated, the data month and the data date. So this way I'm partitioning on the basis of year, month and date. And then at the end, I'm providing the file name. So if you start here, I'm just opening uh, the file, the, the temp file which I want to write. And there I'm opening the event which I have received. So my event may have multiple records or a single record based on how many records are deleted from the DynamoDB table. So I'm creating a particular structure uh, which is given over here. So I'm saying item and then I'm providing the, the record value which is extracted from the event of the DynamoDB item deletion. And this way I'm creating the file. At the end, I'm closing the file and then uploading a file on the partition path, right? So this is the simple Lambda function I have written to extract, uh, to get the data which is received from DynamoDB event, uh, put it into the proper partition, create the proper partition and then upload that file to the S3 bucket. So this is my S3 bucket. Currently it is empty because the process has not started. And then I have created a glue crawler to crawl this bucket. And then we'll use the Athena to query the data from the data exported, right? So let's get back to the DynamoDB table and create one item or few, let's create two items. So action, create item. And let me check what time we have right now. So let me refresh it. So this is the time we have. So I'll, what I'll do, I'll just put a time two minutes after this time. And this is the epoch time I want to put in my DynamoDB table. So my partition key of the table is table ID. This is just the dummy data I'm taking. So based on your requirement, you can have the proper column structure, attribute structure. So I'm saying one. And then the TTL has 
the detail column always has to be the number column so when you are selecting a column you always have to select the number and as I mentioned you earlier we have to provide the exact name what we have given for the detail column and then put the value so the item is created let's create one more item uh, and then I'll put a value of 2 number and I'll put the same value so what I'm saying is at the same time both the record will be deleted and if I come uh, if I go to the proper if I go to the item and then put my mouse over the TTL if you have properly given the name uh, as TTL and you click here you will see the time at which the record will be deleted so the local time it is saying on 14th that is 2 p.m. 2.34 p.m. the the value will be deleted now it is 2.34.21 and over here it is 2.34.57 so it is supposed to get it is supposed to be eligible for deletion beyond this time but as I showed you in the AWS docs it may take up to 48 hours of time after the TTL time has reached to get the record deleted so what I'll do I'll pause the video over here and once the record is deleted I'll resume the video I'll show you what data we have in S3 bucket and then we go for the crawling part so I'm back and uh, I refresh this table and I don't see any records so the records have been deleted from DynamoDB table those were sent to the lambda function through the DynamoDB stream and then those were added to the S3 bucket so this is the S3 bucket let me refresh it and here I can see the folder created so if I'll go inside it uh, I see the partition created for year the month and the date and inside that I have two files because I created two records those were separately removed from the table the two files are created uh, now the files are available in our SC bucket in the partition format let's go to the glue crawler and crawl the crawl the SC bucket so this is the uh, crawler I have created to crawl the path uh, available of the SC bucket from exported data onwards so that I can get partition data for year month and date along with the file inst file file details right so I'll go back to the glue crawler and I'll start the run so I've selected it and I'm running the crawler so crawler will take some time to execute uh, the crawling extracting the column metadata and adding that to the catalog glue catalog so I'll pause the video again I'll resume it once the crawling is done and the catalog is created okay so I'm back and I can see that crawler has succeeded if you want you can go through the log and see what details it has captured in the log but over here you can see that it has created one table uh, because uh, even though we have two files the metadata of those both files were same was same because it was extracted from the same DynamoDB table so it has grouped that information and created a single table so let's go to the Athena and see if we have this table available there so here I'm in Athena and uh, I can see this is the database I have and the table available over here but if I query this table I will not get the proper data because the data was extracted in the form of uh, JSON so to show you what kind of data we have I'll just download a file and show you that okay so the file while the file is being opened let's go to the Athena and here we have to create a new table which will extract details from the JSON and uh, will be available to query using the SQL right so for that I have given a query over here okay so let's uh, the file is open and I can see that file the data which is captured in the file uploaded to S3 is in this format so basically we are saying that this is item the 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 column name the attribute name the type the value and then the second column and if you have multiple such columns those will be repeated in this in this uh, structure so now we have to uh, the crawler has crawled this data but since since it is in the structured format we have to create an external table and then we'll be able to read it using a normal SQL so to create that external table you have to write or you have to create uh, execute this query so basically what I'm saying is create the external table if it is not already there I have given the table name 
the the structure item structure is like we have a delete column the type is uh, number and the table id and then the structure s right then i'm giving the format over here the location from where this data can be extracted and then saying that it is the it is extracted but it is encrypted so let me select this query and go to my athena to execute it so right now if you can see we have only one table which is exported data and once i execute this query so the table is successful and the new table is created and if you can see it has a key so it is encrypted right so let's run uh, open another column uh, another uh, query editor and execute a query to read this data so here i have created a query where i'm saying i need the data from item uh, which is delete time and i'm calling it as delete time and the similar for the table id right so if i run this query so it is giving me the same result which i have in my uh, in my file so this will make it uh, the make the life of a user easier so that they don't have to download the file uh, check the data in that file which is in this format and then run it using uh, and then extract the data so basically they can just create a crawler and get uh, the data from just executing an sql query right so this is what we have done now before i end my video i just want to show you one setting in the athena if you are logging in for the first time you have to set up a location where the logs or the result will be uh, stored right so you have to click a manage here and then you have to provide your bucket name and the prefix if you have so accordingly whatever the result if you are storing any result if you are saving any queries the result will be available in this location so if you see any error if you are not able to run this query which i have given here you have to go and update these settings to refer the proper location so to summarize what we have done today uh, is we removed the older data from dynamodb table in an automated way we loaded that data using a lambda function to uh, s3 bucket in a partition format we later crawled that s3 bucket and created the catalog information and using athena uh, we created the external table and then we executed a query to get details about the older log files which have been exported from DynamoDB to the S3 bucket. So in this way, we have brought down the cost or application by moving data from rather expensive uh, storage uh, class or storage um, uh, database to a lower storage in the S3. And even we can implement few more stuff in S3 to get this data deleted after let's say one year or two years so that's how we have done it uh, the export of data from dynamodb to s3 bucket i hope you learn something new if so please uh, like my video and subscribe to my channel in next video i'll create a cloud formation template which will implement this entire infrastructure uh, with just a click of a button so you don't have to create all these uh, resources manually so thanks for watching my video and have a good day.